When it comes to the surgical treatment of lumbar degenerative disc disease, our options are generally limited to fusion or disc replacement. It's also important to understand that surgery for degenerative disc disease will only be considered if the cause of your pain is localised to one or two discs in the back. The reason for this is there is good evidence that the absence of nerve compression, instability or significant deformity, the risks of surgery outweigh the benefits when pain is shown to come from three or more levels in the lumbar spine. Fusion surgery can be carried out from the back of the spine using screws and rods to stabilise the spine, what we call a posterior lumbar fusion. We can also do surgery from the front, through your belly, referred to as an anterior lumbar interbody fusion, or an ALIF. You may also hear of this sort of procedure being referred to as a standalone anterior fusion. A posterior fusion is often performed in combination with the placement of cages into the disc space from the back of the spine. We refer to these as transforaminal lumbar interbody fusions, or a T-lift or a posterior lumbar interbody fusion, a P-lift. The placement of cages helps to maintain and restore the normal alignment of the spine and improves the chance of achieving a fusion. A fusion may be performed also by a combined approach from the front or side and back of the spine. And we call this an anterior-posterior or 360-degree fusion. When the cage is placed between the vertebrae via a separate incision from the side rather than the back or the front, the procedure is referred to as an oblique lump in the body fusion, or OLIF. The type of fusion we recommend will be determined by the nature of your problem, your build, history of previous surgery, and your surgeon's preference. You can discuss the different fusion options with your surgeon and determine what is the right approach for you and your problem. The other option for treating lumbar degenerative disc disease is a total disc replacement. And this can only be placed from the front of the spine through your belly using the same approach that we use for performing an anterior lumbar fusion or ALIF. It's important that you understand the differences between a fusion and a disc replacement. When we perform fusion surgery, regardless of the approach, we aim to restore alignment and stability to the segment of the spine being treated. And we hope to stop your pain by stopping the movement of the painful disc or facet joints. The aim is to fuse the bones together by stimulating a process similar to what happens when broken bones heal. This process needs the bones to be held still while the bone heals. And we use screws, rods and cages to achieve this. Bone healing can take up to a year and the screws and rods act like an internal splint or a brace to hold the bone in the desired position while that bone heals. Once the bone heals, the screws and rods no longer have a role, but we generally leave the screws and rods in place unless there is shown to cause an irritation of adjacent structures or symptoms. When we perform a lumbar disc replacement, we hope to relieve the pain caused by degenerative disc by removing that painful disc and restoring the height of the disc and the spine alignment. But unlike a fusion, this implant allows movement that is similar to, but not identical to that of the normal disc. Because of this, we have to make sure it is the disc that is causing your pain and not other structures around the spine. This surgery is unlikely to help your pain if the pain is coming from arthritis in the facet joints or structures other than the disc. So not every patient who we feel will benefit from a fusion is a candidate for a disc replacement. The other factor is that most insurance companies will only allow the use of a disc replacement at a single level in the lumbar spine. So if we find you have pain coming from more than one disc level, you may not be permitted to undergo this sort of surgical procedure. Some insurance companies will also allow us to perform what we call a hybrid procedure, where we place the disc replacement at one level and fusion at another. Now the potential benefits of disc replacement is that these implants allow some motion. And while not the same as a normal disc, we hope that by allowing motion, we will decrease the stress on the adjacent levels of the spine and reduce the risk of what we call adjacent level breakdown. Adjacent level breakdown is something we see due to additional stresses being placed on the segments above or below a fusion, which occurs in about 20% of patients having a posterior fusion over a 10 year period. Lumbar disc replacements are made of metal and plastic, similar to the materials used in hip and knee replacements. These implants do not provide any of the shock absorbing features of a normal disc. And this may also have an impact on the adjacent levels. But studies have shown that this to be less than when we perform a posterior fusion or an anterior posterior or 360 fusion. Performing standalone ALIF has also been shown to have a less impact on adjacent level wear and tear than a posterior fusion with screws and rods. 
but there have been no studies comparing the outcomes of a lumbar disc replacement and that of a standalone fusion to date. Despite this, it is more appropriate to consider the pros and cons of a lumbar disc replacement when compared to a standalone fusion than when comparing to posterior or anterior posterior fusion. This is because the surgical approach is identical and the outcome in relation to the chance of relieving your pain caused by degenerative disc disease is similar at around 80 to 85%. The obvious difference is that disc replacements will enable motion, whereas a fusion will not. And while we have a range of different sizes and configurations of both lumbar disc replacement implants and ALIF fusion cages, there are many more variations in patient's anatomy than there are options for these sort of implants. In the case of a fusion, this is not really an issue, as more alternatives exist if we are not trying to recreate normal motion. However, in the case of a disc replacement, if we don't match the mechanics of the implant to your anatomy, we may see some of the same sort of problems develop relating to wear and tear at the levels above or below the disc replacement that we see with a fusion. For this reason, we try to match the implant to your anatomy, which is another reason why not everyone we feel will benefit from a fusion we consider to be suitable for a disc replacement. Like other joint replacements made of metal and plastic, it is likely that this type of artificial joint will wear out at some time in the future. Despite the fact that disc replacements have been used for around 20 years, we still do not have good data regarding how long they will actually last. When joint replacements in the hip, knee or shoulder wear out, they can be replaced or revised relatively easily. But this is not the case with a lumbar total disc replacement. This is because the approach used to place the lumbar disc replacement involves moving structures in your belly that become scarred down and very difficult to move a second time. Because of this, if a lumbar disc replacement wears out, it may be considered too dangerous or impossible to get back to the front of the spine and remove and replace or revise the implant. This is particularly true of disc replacements placed at L45. And in light of this, if a problem develops with a lumbar disc replacement, or surgeon may discuss performing a posterior fusion with screws and rods, leaving the disc replacement where it is. On the other hand, when performing an ALIF, once the level heals and fuses, there is no need to consider returning to the same level again. So consideration of the risk of needing revision surgery is not really an issue. However, it may be possible to address adjacent disease and degeneration above or below a fusion or disc replacement in the future, but this is dependent on the level how and when the initial surgery was performed. The risks of surgical placement of a fusion cage and disc replacement are identical, as is the likely period of time in hospital, the restrictions and rehabilitation for the first six weeks after the surgery. During this period, we encourage walking and simple exercises to restore abdominal muscle tone, but we want you to avoid bending, lifting, twisting and strenuous activities. In the case of a disc replacement at six weeks, we will allow you to return to activities as tolerated. That means you can do whatever doesn't hurt, but with the fusion, we take things a little more slowly and allow a more gradual buildup of activities at six weeks, but do not allow you to resume normal activities until three months post-surgery. In light of these considerations, your surgeon will discuss the relative risks and benefits of performing a lumbar disc replacement versus a fusion. That is, if both procedures are considered appropriate based on your anatomy, the nature of your problem, and the type of work and recreational activities. The decision regarding which procedure will be best for you is made together after discussing the relative risks and benefits of each approach. Finally, as is the case with every surgical procedure, we will only offer surgery where we believe there is a good chance the procedure will relieve your symptoms, but no guarantees can be given. Sometimes less than optimal results will occur because of development of complications, such as infection or a non-union. That's when the bone doesn't heal. We also have some patients that have persistent pain where there have been no complications and a solid fusion is achieved or the implants are shown to function correctly. Because of this, it's also important that you consider how you would manage should you continue to have pain or limitations after your surgery.